Hello friends, Kishan is here again. In this video tutorial, basically we are going to talk about the transaction attributes. Uh, this is the project which I had created in my earlier uh, demo. And here I am trying to manage transaction using a Spring provided annotation at the rate transactional. So while specifying, while annotating this method, uh, as a at the rate transactional I have specified many attributes so let's talk about the each and every attribute so here I have given read only false means means my transaction is able to do the right operation in the under database so let me show you this project let me run it and this project is running successfully so money is getting transferred from one account to another account and if i refresh then this becomes 51 and this destination accounts becomes 55000 now here i have allowed to write my transaction in data storage if i i don't want to allow to write anything in my database then I would say read only equals to true and if I try to run then definitely you will get an exception right because you are deducting money from one account and trying to deposit in another account and if I run it then let me show you console look at it clearly saying that queries leading to data modification are not allowed nested exception is java.sql java.sql.sql exception connection is read only queries leading to data modification are not, not allowed so if you want your transaction to perform some right operation in data storage then always you will have to make uh, read only false so that's why i have made here false right sorry so make it false again so i would summarize read only the read only attribute specifies the transaction is only going to read data from a data database the advantage of it is that the database may apply certain optimization to the transaction when it is declared to read only since read only attributes comes in the action as soon as the transaction starts it may be applied to only those propagation settings that starts a new transaction will uh, after certain while we'll discuss about the propagation level so there are some propagation level which always starts a new transactions so if you specify read only attribute and uh, that real uh, only attribute is only meaningful when you set some transactions like transaction required transaction requires new and nested because these are the propagation level basically responsible to start a new transactions right now next attribute we have a, a timeout timeout specifies the maximum time allowed for a transaction to run this may be required since transaction that run for a long time may unnecessarily holds locks for a long time when a transaction reaches the uh, time timeout period it it is rolled back timeout needs to be specified only on the propagation setting that it starts a new transactions right if you specify some propagation level which does not start a new transaction then specifying a timeout is meaningless right so if you specify propagation level which which is responsible to start a new transaction then specifying a timeout is meaningful now next attribute we have a rollback for that is also called rollback rules it is also possible to specify that transaction rollback on certain exceptions and do not rollback on other exceptions by specifying the rollback rules so here i have specified by default transaction will be rollback for the only runtime exception but i want transactions transaction should be rollback for the check decision as well that's why i have specified uh, exception dot classes because in my example i had created some check exception like insufficient 
uh, something is called insufficient account balance exception. So I want transaction to be rolled back for this exception as well. So that's why I have specified uh, exception dot class over here. Even you can specify one more attribute is called uh, no rollback for right. Uh, no rollback for you, you can uh, also specify you can specify some list of uh, exception for that uh, rollback rollback will not be applied now uh, most important attribute is the propagation level right so this is very much, much similar to the uh, if you would have worked on the EJV then EJV we had some propagation level as well so here spring provides save and propagation level Let's discuss one by one. First of all, I would like to say what is I, what is propagation level. So while dealing with the Spring managed transactions, the developer is able to specify how the transaction should behave in terms of propagation. In other words, the developer has the ability to decide how the business methods should be encapsulated in both logical or physical transactions. Methods from the distinct Spring bins may be executed in the same transaction scope or actually being spanned across multiple nested transactions. This may lead to details like how does the inner transaction outcome result affects the outer transaction. So first uh, propagation level I would like to discuss that is required which already I have stated over here. Since required behavior means that same transaction will be used if there is an already open transaction in the current bin method. Execution, the current method execution context. If there is no existing transaction, uh, the Spring container will create a new one. If multiple methods configured as required behavior are called in a nested way, they will be assigned distinct logical transactions, but they will all share the same physical transaction. In short, this means that if an inner uh, method causes a transaction to roll back, the outer transaction will fail to commit and will also roll back the transaction. Right? So from here, we are making call to the our doll layer API, right? So for this doll layer, we haven't specified any uh, propagation level. So these two uh, methods will be executed within the propagation level as uh, uh, required so if uh, even you can go in this method and you can specify here at the rate transactional sorry at the rate I don't know why my keyboard is not working You can specify at the rate transactional and here you can specify propagation as required right so this is already there if you do not specify a still inner transaction will execute in this propagation level and even though as after specifying this propagation level if I run it then this is gonna run successfully right so this ran successfully so to summarize this here you can note uh, here we have uh, two methods so note here you can note that the inner inner transaction if inner transaction throws runtime exception suppose if we go to here and if I throw some run uh, some exception over here while executing this method uh, if I throw some exception over here if you throw some exception in this method uh, still transaction is going to roll back right entire transaction is some exception rises over here or here then entire transaction is going to roll back so uh, this means that it will use the inner transaction will use the same transaction as the outer pin. So the outer transaction will fail if commit will also roll back by the 
child transaction. Now next we have our next propagation level we have a yeah sorry next next propagation level we have sorry I am not discussing about isolation but propagation requires new so requires new behavior means that a new physical transaction will always be created by the container in other words the inner transaction may commit or roll back independently of the outer transaction so required means a new a new physical transaction will be always uh, will be always created by the container in other words the inner transaction may commit or roll back independently of the outer transaction the outer transaction will not be affected by the by the inner transaction result they will run in distinct physical transaction suppose here i am going to specify in in this transaction i am going to specify requires new right so this method will instantiate a new physical transaction instead of logical transaction and i am going to throw some exception over here so what will happen uh, for this this transaction will run in the uh, requires required uh, propagation level so so the uh, this will run within the uh, parent parent transaction uh, parent transaction context so here we will have a uh, in deposit we will have a logical transaction uh, which will follow the parent transaction but in this child transaction we will have a physical new transaction if some rollback happens uh, then if uh, some rollback happens over here then parent will be rollback but uh, this will this transaction will be started in the uh, new physical transaction so this will be automatic this this transaction will commit uh, independently so if i run the before running this code let's see what is the balance 50000 and 56000 if i run it if i run it then look at here so while depositing there is some exception now if i go to here and i refresh this will become 49 this one this will become 57 so look at here so here child is executed in the separate physical transaction but if i comment this one then both will depend on the parent transaction context so even though some exception arises while depositing the transaction then if i refresh this would be only 49 and this will be 56 so look at here so that's the difference between requires new and required transaction so if you have a parent transaction as a uh, propagation level as required and child as a requires new then child will be executed uh, independently so if child throws uh, if child is roll back then parent is parent is not going to roll back so child will execute independently so that's about uh, propagation level requires uh, new so in requires new you have seen the inner method is annotated with requires new and throws runtime exception so it will save the transaction to the rollback but will not affect the outer transaction the outer transaction is paused when the inner transaction starts and then resumes after the inner transaction is continued they run independently of the each other so the outer transaction may commit successfully now next behavior we have a nested behavior so nested behavior makes nested spring transaction to use the same physical physical transaction and set save points between nested invocation so inner transaction may also commit independently of the outer transaction and next we have a propagation level like mandatory 
the mandatory behavior states that an existing open transaction must already exist. If 